You're not going to believe this. We're five kilometres from Alambray and not a stone, you know, not a sharp stone like they say, you know, the gibbies, the little sharp stones. A bloody screw in me tyre. Anyway, we're going to pump it up and get us the five k's to Alambray because they've got tyre repairs. <laughs> Well, we finally arrived at Alambray with a few issues. <laughs> Just a couple. Uh, just a couple. Uh, microwave had to be screwed back in. Um, the hot water service has pinholes in the exchange, heat exchanger. So I've got some um, uh, W weld or whatever it's called to fix it. Um, JB off, weld? Is yeah, it? JB, JB weld, weld off some really nice uh, campers that were here. Um, what else? Um, we haven't had scones yet. No, we haven't had scones. We're about to go and have scones. Yeah. But, yeah, just a few issues on um, the gib. Yeah, just a couple. Uh, we lost one of our, well, one of the caps off the uh, storage cylinder on the front of the van come off somewhere along the gib. And we lost our extension pole for our antenna. Yep. And Tony's um, spear. Spear. My uh, Hawaiian sling. Hawaiian sling. That and my mother-in-law gave me for Christmas. What was the other thing you lost? A um, squid. Oh, squid pole, but that's okay. Um, so if anyone finds one between Drysdale Station and Allen Bray, yeah. please let us know. Yeah. Um, we'll pay for the freightage. So, yeah, just because the gib is so corrugated, uh, everything comes loose. Screws yeah. come loose, things fall off, yeah. things get squashed. Um, it was actually the part between Drysdale Station and the turn-off. Um, yeah, back the onto worst. the gib was the worst. So I think, um, you know, going down to Drysdale and back um, actually did some harm. Yeah. But anyway. Anyway, they're all fixable things. Yep. Still worth coming. Got a flat tyre. Yeah. And it wasn't from a sharp stone. It was from <laughs> bloody, from a, um, a screw. So the, um, the guy here at Alambray uh, does tyres, which is a really good thing. And he said, thanks for my screw back. He goes, <laughs> I'd put it back out on the road and get another <laughs> customer. <laughs> But yeah, it was good. Anyway, but so thanks, Mark, for helping us out. So we'll show you down at the toilets. They're really quirky and uh, the shower block. And we're going to have some scones. And yeah, we're going to have some scones. So I'll just uh, screw this around and show you our site. Where we are. It's a bit of a dust bowl, but um, we're in um, Ringers Campground, which is at the moment, um, everybody's just left. It's only about 11 o'clock. Um, but uh, it fills up again, as, as people know. Uh, you're allowed to have fires, which we did last night, and we're gonna have another one tonight. Uh, and the showers, we'll show you them on the way to having scones. So this is the, um, this is the, there's a barbecue area, there's toilets and showers here. Uh, they're not, these aren't donkey ones, these are gas uh, or hot water services. So I'll just show you the barbecue area, which is really, really quirky, and there's some nice grass to sit down if you bring your chairs under the shade. And they have a barbecue, a bit of rock work, a nice central table. There's a big fire pit that you can load firewood into. Um, and it's a really nice shaded area, and it's pretty warm at the moment, so it's nice and cool under here couple of tables, a, uh, a wash, wash out, and this is from creek water. Uh, you can have generators up till four o'clock in the afternoon here. <laughs> oh, there's a bath. <laughs> oh, wow. Keisha, <laughs> you'd love this. A shower? Yeah. How cool is that? Yeah. So if you've got kids, yeah. I'm a big kid. That's why not? But that's pretty quirky. And, the and there's another toilet and, and there's another toilet. 
Wow, that's pretty cool. That's like a family area. Yeah. And I think the showers are open roof, aren't they? Yeah, they are. They are they're that and they come out of like, uh, watering cans. There's toilets. Watch your tops. Yep, wash up basin. And they look after the place pretty good around here. Oh wow, look at that. And these are the showers. There's one, two there, and another one here. Look at the uh, Which is the over head. there. And the head, yeah. <laughs> It's a watering can. How cool is that? Very cool. So there you go. That's the area for ringers and there's another campground called Jackaroo. Yeah. Uh, which we'll um, take you over and show you that. We'll just go for a bit of a drive around, but we're staying in ringers. Right up the back there. Yeah, which is closer to the water hole for a swim. Uh, the other one, there's another watering hole that you drive to, which is probably better, and we're right up the back up there, as you can see. homestead at Ellenbury and this is where you get the scones <laughs> can't wait a nice grassy area beautiful gardens um, an oasis in the middle of the desert I'd call it and yeah they do toasties as well but they don't do lunch or anything I like that quiche, quiche oh, I quiche today yeah that's right very good Barra up here. <laughs> wow. Flooding. In the wet season. There you go. The famous Ellenbray scones. <laughs> so this is a watering hole that you can swim in. Uh, it's a 500 metre walk on sand obviously, we've got our thongs on. Um, and it's halfway up the driveway and it says no entry but when you get there to the um, station they tell you you're allowed to come up here so there you go 500 meter walk nice piece of fauna on the way down to the river well we got down here and it's got a bit of a crocky feel to it, but I uh, haven't seen one yet. But it's a nice little gorge. Probably come down here for a swim. Crocs? With the crocs. <laughs> it's nice and peaceful, there's no one else here.
on the Pentecost River. And Just. yeah, we have jet lag <laughs> because and anxiety <laughs> and a few other things. So the list is long and distinguished of what happened, but go through the go through the list, and I'll show them in a so minute. So we'll start off at Alan before we got to Alan Bray, which I think we got footage of. We yep. got a roofing nail through the tire of the caravan. Yep. So we limped into Alan Bray, pumping it up every five k's. Yes, about that. And then when we got to Alan Bray, we had it changed and fixed. Because so they that, do that there. So that was okay. Yep. But then <clears> when we opened the door at Alan Bray, what had happened? Our microwave had fallen inside In? its own cavity. Yep. It did come out of its frame. Um, the screws, had, it's all about screws. So yeah. Yeah. Along the give, every single screw comes loose. Mm. Um, and sometimes they find their way to your tyres. <laughs> yeah, from someone else's <laughs> loose screws. Anyway. Um, so that was up to Alan Bray. Yep. Uh, what else did we have going wrong? Oh, oh Alan the hot Bray, water the hot water service. We turned the pump on and it was surging uh, with no water taps running. So that told us there was a leak somewhere. And at the same time, the hot water wouldn't kick in. Hmm. So Tony pulled it all out and sure enough, uh, the corrugations have worn little tiny pinholes in the... Heat exchanger. In the, in the, so the copper pipe. Hmm. So when you did turn the hot water on and the pump kicked in, it would spray water hmm. underneath the seat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which was fun. So that was fixed. Tony fixed that. 97 screws I had to take out to get it out, and then 97 screws to put it back in. So that stopped the water leak, but then the hot water server still wouldn't start. They had an error, E8. So when we looked up the book, what was it? Something to do with air pressure? Yes. So Tony went and vacuumed it all and bingo. Blew it all out. It fired again. And Just that dust. Was all, that mm -hmm. was all fixed. Yep. What else is there back at Alambra? Um Oh, there's a few things. We lost, oh. we lost the mast to our antenna on the way. So the big five metre, 5.4 metre telescopic antenna pole mast, what that we, we have. That we use for our MIMO. Is kept in one of the... Cylinders. Uh, one of the plumbing pipe yeah. type cylinders that's attached to the bottom of the caravan. And somewhere around a, a bend <laughs> on it the came out. Uh, the cap on the end of the... Uh, the cylinder has come off yep. and all the contents inside the cylinder found its way on the gib hmm. over a few kilometres. Yeah. <laughs> um, we didn't know where. So it was what a spear, a Hawaiian sling. Sling, yep. And My fishing spear. Yep. And our antenna and a squid, um, uh, squid pole. pole. Mm. So we weren't in very good moods when we got to Alan Bray. Mm. That was all there was, I think, at Alan Bray. Yeah, that was it. Other than just uh, a few things in the fridge. So then we continued on from Alan Bray after staying there for a few days. Continued on for another... 125 k's to the Pentecost. But along the way, <laughs> we thought we'd better check the caravan. So the first stop... Got out and there was a slow leak in the tyre. In the car. In the car. So this is the second one along the gib, mind you. And I always thought it was going to be stones, the sharp stones that rip the sidewalls and all these stories you hear about the sharp stones and, and everything else. But the first one was a roofing nail, and the second one was this. I'll just show you. Look at the size of it. That's like just a huge piece of metal. And I thought it was another nail because only the top part here was protruding out and it just looked like the head of a nail. But once we got it out, that was it. Hmm. Anyway, continue on. So that was the first stop to check the van. We discovered the uh, that in the tire. <sighs> and when we opened the door to the caravan, the table had fallen off. Oh, we, we discovered cordial on the step. Oh, that's right. Cordial was all over the step and um, inside the front door is our little pantry. So there was a bottle of cordial 
that had completely worn through the bottom of the plastic. And leaked out. And leaked all through the cupboard, out under the cupboard, down the step and onto the outside step. So that was a litre of cordial? That was a litre of green cordial. <laughs> then... Um, we discovered the table. The table had yeah. completely came, come off the wall. The piano hinge had come apart. But it was also just screws, just screws. But not just one screw on that. It was, it was how many screws? It was about 15, a dozen. 15, dozen, 15 screws, something like that. Yep. Which had already been tightened up at Allenbury. Mm. So they'd completely come away from the table. Mm. So the table was in the middle of the floor. Yep. So once I got past that and I've looked up the back of the van, the hallway of the van, I could see the toilet bathroom door in the middle of the hallway. <laughs> so the whole door had come off. And taken a few chunks out. I'll just show you. Hold on. So this is the little guy that is the, the perpetrator. He came loose. So we now have no tool. Oh, we do. We've got it. It's just sitting outside. We can't be bothered putting it back on because it'll just rattle off again. But anyway, and then as it fell, it took that chunk out of the wall and that chunk out of the wall. And the floor. And we have to get a new piece of lino down here. And then... Uh, the microwave. Oh, the microwave. Which Twice. is Twice. which is broken here. And I've glued I've just glued it back on for now, but this is the second time it's come out. And there's little screws at the back of it, and I've put new screws, bigger screws, that might work, maybe. Also the pumps. The pumps that are underneath the pumps underneath the, the fridge yep. had, had also all come loose. Mm -hmm. um, there was four screws in each of those. Actually, I think that was back at Allen Bray. Yeah, that you, was back you at You actually did all, redid all those back at yep. Allen Bray. Glued and screwed them with bigger screws. Um, the sink, the bottom. Oh, the sink, yep. The um, gut, uh, what do they call it? The gusset of the sink. It um, worked its way loose. Had completely unscrewed. Yep. And then also in the bathroom, I could smell one of my perfumes quite strong. <laughs> So I opened the door of the bathroom cabinet. Show them, honey. And one of my perfumes had completely worn a hole through the glass. Look at that. The whole van smells nice now. Nice now. It's really... How beautiful. It's, uh, yeah. So it just yeah. goes to show you how much um, everything cops a real pounding mm. on corrugated roads. Yeah. Um, we prepare the van fairly well, I think. We did. Um, <laughs> we tape everything. We, you know, tape, like after the the episode we did or the, the vlog we did on the filming inside the van mm. on um, corrugated roads, after even seeing the top of the stove bouncing like it did, we decided we'd start taping that down, we tape that down, we tape the table down, we tape the fridge closed now because the freezer door did come open on another road. Yep. Um, so we do actually tape everything and we pack everything, you know, carefully. Like none of our cups or anything have broken because we do really pack them into padded uh, mm. type areas. But things that you just would not imagine <laughs> would fall off or come off have. Mm. So, um, spice, uh, spice lids, lids off the spices. Yeah, they just all popped off. Rattle off. Um, yeah. And Tony's marmalade emptied in the, in <laughs> in the, the pantry, pantry altogether. <laughs> the lid had popped off. So, but, if anybody's got some marmalade, but can there's they send also it to me? things like um, I had a, a, a can of um, like hairspray, a mousse type thing. Yep. It was completely upside down in the cupboard. In the same spot that it was, but it had actually gone up and back down, Flipped upside over. down. Yep. So just the force of that, for that to do that. Mm -hmm. There was a, um, we have long life milk in one of the cupboards that we keep for a rainy day. One of them had vibrated that hard that the bottom of it was leaking. Mm -hmm. it, it, all the cardboard that it's held in just turned to mush. Yeah. So yeah, vibration after vibration. It was probably the worst 
section of the gib. Yeah, uh, between we, Alan Bray and the Pentecost. Yeah. I think I think we definitely would both agree that that's been the worst. Yep, in the last 10 k's before the Pentecost, you get a stretch of um, asphalt, but the grader was about 10 k out, and, and as soon as you see the grader, from there on, it was beautiful. Mm. So if you're lucky enough to uh, catch it when it's graded, <laughs> really good. So where we're parked up at the moment on the Pentecost, we're across the river from the road, the Gibb River Road that comes into the crossing. And just the noise that you can hear that the vans are making as as the cars are going over the corrugation is giving us really major anxiety <laughs> after what we've just been through. Yeah, so, mm. so um, that's a wonderful thing. Anyway, we're recovering today mm. and replacing and repairing and... Yeah. Um, and as soon as you hit the Pentecost, uh, if you're coming from the Derby end, as soon as you hit the Pentecost, it's uh, clean sailing. They're doing road works to asphalt it up to the Pentecost. And from from there on to uh, El Questro and beyond is all just asphalt. So uh, the worst part was between Alan Bray and the Pentecost and you know, we copped it before it was graded. So yeah, really, really bad. Even our humbugs, I'll show you our humbugs. I'll stay there, I'll bring them over. So these are colorful humbugs, but as you can see, they've turned to powder. They've just turned to powder. They're like sherbets. Oh, that's it. They taste the same. Yeah. So that's it for our um, drive between Alan Bray and the Pentecost. Um, it was it just destroyed a lot of things. It did in a the lot van. of damage. Yeah. Mm. So I don't know what the answer is because they say to do a speed that sort of gets you on top of the corrugation. Which is about 60. Yeah. And have, um, your, have your tyres around 30. Um, so you do that, but then there's a lot of floodways and there's a lot of dips that you've got to slow down for, otherwise you're going to hit them at you know mm. a, a speed that's not good either. Yeah. So, and then you slow down, then it's really hard to get back up onto the top of the, yeah. the corrugations, mm. which then you're really bouncing everything around. Mm. So. It's just a really tough road. And, um, <laughs> Glad we've done it. I think because it was really good to do it. Yeah, we are. We didn't think that yesterday. No. <laughs> <laughs> Today's a new day. Yeah. And um, there was a few expletives about the Gib River Road. I couldn't tell you. Yeah. Mm. But uh, yeah, it's all good. We've done it now, and you know, mate, we might do it again. Maybe. Not with a caravan, I don't think. No. No, I no. don't think so. Mm. Maybe we'll get um, chauffeured in one of those tour buses <laughs> when we're about 70. Yeah, the Kimberley Adventure <laughs> ones, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we've done it. And um, just to let you guys know that if you're going to do it, make sure you prepare really, really well. And um, the manufacturers of the caravans, and I don't care who it is, um, and I'm not saying that it's you know, just ours or anybody's or whatever. Well, just here where we are, there's a few people we've spoken to and they've, one of them, they had their bathroom door fall off as well. Yeah. So. And, and everybody's got the same stories, you know, like disintegrating bananas and all sorts of stuff. But um, they really use the minimal uh, amount of screws. And um, cheap. And really cheap screws, um, which is, you know, that's, that's cupboards today, you know, like everybody puts everything together cheaply so they can, you know, get more profit. So um, go over your van, have a look and see what little screws you can change for bigger screws, maybe, or at build, say to them, I want, you know, 12 gauge screws or something a bit, a little bit better to if hold you, it all if together. If you're going to do the gear. If you're going to do the gear, that's yeah, it. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely, because mm. it's screws. That's, Everything's screws. That's asphalt for us for now on. <laughs> All anyway. the way. <laughs> yes. Anyway, moving on. Moving on. So this is our site at the Pentecost. It's absolutely free. No amenities. But you're right on the river. I'll just show you the river. And just got a rod in. Just to see how we go. See if we can catch me a barra. And this is our setup. Right on the bank. Got the solar panel out, got the satellite out, bit of TV later on, maybe watch the tennis finals, and did a bit of rock stacking just for a nice garden view, and uh, that's it. Us and uh, about 37,000 others.
There you go. Beautiful little camp. Every now and again you find a beautiful tree with a beautiful backdrop and uh, this one this one's one of them um, some people have carved their names in it just for the hell of it <laughs> poor bloody tree it's a really old boab and have a look at the backdrop is unbelievably sensational See the black stuff down here? That's the end of the gib. <laughs> Nearly. <laughs> it's so good to see this stuff and no more, no more. <laughs> That's where we come from. And that is where we're going. El Cuestro turn off is 6Ks.